Okay, uh, part six now of the 18th edition draft, and there's been comment on large changes um, in the inspiration testing, but it's more a case of the the layout and the structure of part six. The content itself isn't that different at all. There's a couple of additional words here and there. We'll just go through through them. Um, so yeah, the um, it's been completely re restructured to align with Senelec now. So what we had before was chapter 61, 62, and 63. Um, 61 was initial verification, 62 was periodics, and 63 was another chapter that was all about certification and reporting. What they've done is they've now taken those three out and we have chapter 64 and 65, that's all, and the certification has been split and included with initial verification and periodic inspection testing respectively. What have we got then? We've got a little adjustment to um, 641.4 it says precautions shall be taken to avoid danger to persons and livestock and to avoid danger to property and installed equipment during inspection and testing what's different there well the fact is it says you mu you will take precautions to prevent danger if you actually look in the old regulation it did say What did it say? Okay, so we have a couple of new inspection items, 642.3. Uh, the old list is there, but they've added at the end of that. The erection methods has been changed to selection and erection of a wiring systems erection method. I guess that may need a more definition. We've also got now, because they're introduced in Amendment 3, but not or pushed through. They actually introduced earlier than that, weren't they? We've got... Selection and installation of suitable SPD devices where required and measures against electromagnetic disturbances. So they've been added to the inspection items. Continuity of conductors. Again, it's just a reword. Um, the, the old regulation, it should be made, it should be recommended to be carried out with a supply of a no load voltage of 4 volts to 20 well, that's all gone that bit it would be made to verify the continuity of each conductor it's now the continuity of conductors and the connections to exposed conductive parts and exchange conductive parts in any if any shall be verified by measurement of resistance on a protective conductors including bonding conductors and in the case of ring final circuits live conductors so that's actually the old two regulations, 61221 and 61222, compressed into one regulation there for the ring final circuits as well. They've taken the little bit of 4 volts, 24 volts, 200 milliamp out, which is annoying because that might have to disappear now from exams. But uh, we'll see. Uh, table 61 is now table 64. That's fine, it's the first table in chapter 64. The the old the old regulation had a note two to six twelve three two saying the insulation resistance values are usually much higher. It's now been introduced to the regulation. It's not in a note. It says the, the values are usually much higher than the, those of table sixty four. If they show evident differences between the circuits, then further investigation to identify the reasons is required. Protection by ADS. So compliance uh, with regulation 414 should be verified by measurement of the earth fault loop. It says here alternatively, when the measurement of the earth fault loop impedance is not possible, the verification of the electrical continuity of the protective conductors 
is sufficient provided calculations of earthfall loop impedance or protective conductor resistance are available. So this is saying you can verify earthfall loop impedance if you have a measurement of continuity of protective conductor, which we know we can do with the, the little here, the, the uh, ZS is equal to R1 plus R2 plus ZE. So it's basically confirming that we can verify earthfall loop with a confirmation measurement of protective conductor. The effectiveness of the automatic disconnection of supply for RCDs will be verified using suitable test equipment according to 61557. And it says, take into account the operating characteristics of the device. The effectiveness of the protective measure is verified if disconnection occurs with a fault current lower than or equal to the rated current operating of the device. So again, we're verifying the suitability of an RCD by evaluating the operating characteristics, the effectiveness of the protective measure. It is recommended that disconnection times required by Chapter 41 be verified. The requirement for disconnection times will be verified in case of additions and alterations to an existing installation where existing RCDs are used as disconnecting devices. Where the effectiveness of the protective measure has been confirmed at a point located downstream of an RCD, the protection of the installation downstream from that point may be approved by confirmation of continuity of protective conductors. Okay. Uh, Electro resistance has moved from before ADS to after ADS, and has been reworded. Earth foot loop. We've got measure to determine alternate. An actual continuity test will be carried out according to 6432 before carrying out an earth loop impedance measurement. The measured earth loop impedance will comply with 41. And if it's not satisfied, in case of doubt where supplementary bonding according to 41 is applied, the effectiveness of the bonding shall be checked. So you measure continuity before your earth fault loop. Also note there, further information on the measurement of earth loop impedance is found in Appendix 3. It used to be in Appendix 14. It's now Appendix 3. So, that's moved. Additional protection. Uh, if anything, I'll make yeah. All right. Where additional protection is provided by supplementary protective bonding, the effectiveness of that bonding shall be checked in accordance with the requirements of Chapter 41. So you're going to obviously measure the RA of that, possibly, or the resistance of that. Initial verification, certification here. They've just added a little, little, little sentence there, really, or part of a sentence, saying that the replacement of a distribution board is an example of a new installation certificate. So maybe people have been doing periodics or something for that. Or minor works even. Mm. Chapter 65 periodic inspection and testing. Alright, be carried out without dismantling or with partial dismantling. Okay, we verify the safety of persons and livestock, protection against damage and property, but they've also added these two things to check. We will confirm the correct rating and setting of protected devices required by Chapter 41, such as RCDs. <laughs> selectable RCDs. I'm going to confirm the correct rating and setting of monitoring devices. Through notes. Note 2. Existing installations may have been designed and installed to confirm the previous additions. Applicable at the time of their design and erection, this does not necessarily mean they are unsafe. Where a circuit is permanently monitored by an RCM or an IMD, it is not necessary to measure the installation resistance if the functional verification or the functioning of the RCM and, RC and IMD is correct. So you've got to verify the function of an RCM, the function of an IMD. If they are okay, then the need to um, carry installation resistance tests. It's not that. Those devices have been doing it for you, haven't they? Alright, 6213. Precautions taken has been changed to periodic inspection testing shall not cause danger. 
So use the same precaution shall be taken to ensure that it does not cause danger. Now it just says no, it won't cause danger. So uh, you know, maybe people have caused danger and have said, oh well, obviously I didn't take the right precautions. Well, the the um, ability to misinterpret what precautions are is no longer there. You just must not cause danger. If you cause danger, then that's a non-compliance. Okay, reporting. The report shall also include details of those parts that have been inspected, any limitations, any damage, deterioration, defects or dangerous conditions, non-compliances, schedules of inspections and schedule of results to the appropriate tests of 643. So that is part of the periodic reporting. And yeah, that's it. That's part six. So let's go back. A bit of restructure. That's fine. For, you know, checking SPDs and electromagnetic disturbances or EMI measures are okay. That's new. Some people may need again, um, depending on your knowledge on those those device types and those systems, you may need to fresh yourself up on that. Continuity is taking some technical content out, made it easier to read. That's good. It's now saying that yeah. If you're measuring the high readings, that's great. But if you do have on a brand new system numbers that aren't high and the same, you need to investigate further. This is verifying we can uh, measure a full impedance or verify a full impedance by um, calculation with our confirmed continuity measurement. Yeah, um, there's a little bit more explaining in the regulations or you know support with testing I, I always thought testing was a little bit vague because you know everyone relies on guidance notes 3 um, so there's a bit more support here a bit more information it needs to be more I'm, um, I'm still frustrated they've not added any concern about um, verification of neutrals on uh, radial circuits for example because uh, our testing methods these days are, are abysmal so you know we need to start changing our testing methods or adding continuity testing of neutrals. But yeah, okay. This is a uh, this is this is this is nothing. All right, I'm gonna move on to a part seven video, which will take a while because there's just lots of waffle really, um, including the new seven uh, three O, which is a whole lot of nothing. Then I'll push on to part eight, but I'll, I'll see you on the part 7 video next and that one's done good